we must be active we must do something whether we are educated or not there are certain things that we can do by using our mind by using our words by using our physical body so there are various things that we can do to make use of this life for our own benefit as well as to do some service to others there are two ways when you do some service to others we also serve ourselves without serving helping supporting others we cannot serve ourselves because we are very selfish we are na- very narrow minded so this advice is important for all of us to be active not to waste our time for nothing again in another discourse he also mentioned those who do not do something when they are young when they waste their valuable time for unnecessary things panyay maggam also navindati such lazy people such useless people never enjoy their life and never experience happiness in their life and never get the chance to lead a comfortable happy and prosperous and peaceful life see the buddha is a person who has renounced given up worldly life but by knowing that your way of life he advised for all the necessary uh, important items in our day to day life what to do what not to do how to behave how to make use of this life if we want to lead a worldly life worldly life means business life married life a uh, uh, pleasurable life sensual life this is called worldly life so many people prefer to lead the worldly life although there are so many troubles and problems and difficulties and worries but they are willing to face those problems and difficulties to experience worldly pleasure to them worldly pleasures are more important But later when there are more and more problems and worries and disturbances and difficulties come to them some of them decide to renounce keep away from the worldly life to have a peaceful contented life by keeping away lot of commitment and responsibilities and worries so there are two ways for us to lead our life those who want to lead the worldly sensual life the buddha says they must be active they must do something without wasting their time those who want to keep away from worldly life Uh, they can have a very peaceful calm and uh, isolated life even without associating with others they can experience peace and happiness some people like that way of life however this advice given by the buddha especially very useful for young people how to shape their life not to suffer later when they grow old when they are sick when they are in trouble 
if they have not wasted their time earlier, they know what to do at that time. Because they have prepared for it. Now that is why he says, we must be active. We must do something. Then our life never gets into unexpected problems or misfortunes or calamities that we cannot tolerate. When we prepare to face these problems by leading an active life, we know how to face them. We know how to overcome them. We know how to avoid so many worldly problems. Because worldly life is actually the most difficult and most uncertain, very unreliable, unpredictable way of life. Because changes always take place. We plan, we think, we arrange, we organize. But things are going on changing, changing, changing. But if we are active, then we know what to do when certain difficulties and troubles and problems come to us. If we are lazy, if we have not done anything, if we have not prepared, uh, then we surrender. After that, the life become very miserable. Uh, that is why the Buddha said, be active. Then the next advice is, Arakha Sampada. Arakha means protect. By working hard, you earn something. Either your money, or your property, your land, your houses, your jewellery, or your business, whatever you have. You must know how to protect. Because there will be so many difficulties. People are trying to bluff you, swindle you, cheat you, rob you. Then you must be alert. Again, you must know how to protect, where to keep. Whatever you have earned, your money or jewellery, you should not neglect them. Always be alert. Protect them. Not only that. Fire, flood, last two days. How many thousands of people have lost their property, their houses, their valuable things, and some of them have lost their lives also. Flood. Because they have not expected it. So, we must know how to protect our life. We must know how to protect our family members, our houses, our property, our income, our money. Uh, these are the duties of worldly people. Now see the way how Buddha gives this advice. You must know how to protect what you have earned without wasting. Again he says, don't spend for unnecessary things. Always keep something, invest something for your future. Because future is uncertain. Today you may have your relatives, your friends, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, but how long can you depend on them? Therefore, you must have some sort of confidence in you. The confidence that you develop in others are changeable. Our friendship, our relationship fade away, disappear due to certain misunderstandings, circumstances, everything disappear. So when I am alone, 
when you are alone then you are responsible for your life so always you must develop confidence in you without depending on too much on others because the mind is changeable even husband and wife who are leading very peaceful happy prosperous married life unexpected things happen to change their mind then they become enemies or they separate are this is the uncertainty of worldly life we depend on parents we depend on children we can see children separate from the parents parents separate from the children then nobody to depend on so the buddha advice is you are responsible for your life but if you can develop your friendship relationship goodwill towards your friends and relatives so much the better but these things are changeable so develop your self confidence and try to protect what you have earned without neglecting without wasting without spending for unnecessary things now this is the second advice kalyana mittata the third advice when you want to associate with some of your friends you must know how to choose your friends because many people are not reliable many people are selfish try to take the advantage they pretend that they are very good friends but they are ulterior motive selfish idea is to gain something from you sometimes they may disappear when you are in trouble also they disappear but the real friend even at the risk of his life never neglect never forget never keep away from his or her friend therefore in another discourse the buddha says vishwasa parama nyati reliable friend trustworthy friends are the real relatives blood relationship is one thing real friendship goodwill understanding are more effective than the blood relationship with saas paramaja now if you can trust your friends if you think your friends are very reliable the buddha said they are far better than your relative who have blood relationship and then you are very fortunate if you have such friends to keep an eye on you to give his or her helping hand when you are in trouble when you are sick when you need their service so try to find out a suitable friend for you to associate that gives some sort of confidence or this is the third advice the last advice is samajivikata samajivikata means you had to organize your way of life your expenditure your day to day life daily routine by considering your income how much you earn per month or per year you had to think very carefully how much can you save 
how much you have to spend because buddhist economy or the buddha's teaching he said the whole income that you gain say one month you earn only 1000 dollars then how to spend this 1000 dollars ekena you bhoge bunjeya you have to divide this 1000 into four group then 250 ekena bhoge bunjeya you can spend only 250 dollars for your food should not spend more than 250 per year dvihi kammang payoje two portion that mean 500 dollars dvihi kammang payoje 500 dollars you had to spend for your duties responsibilities your, your business and all your activities you should not spend more than 500 dollars for all your activities then remain only one for 250 remain chaturthancha nidapey this 250 dollars you had to invest either fixed deposit if not share market if not some other investment don't say buddhism goes against this thing you had to invest certain amount then you can go on developing multiplying multiplying increasing 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 interest compound interest so after few years time you can see how much and uh, then you have confidence now i am not worried whether my husband supported me or not whether my wife supported me or not whether my children supported me or not whether my relatives or friends supported me or not i have something i have something so when i am sick when i am in trouble when i am in difficulty i have something then that confidence gives courage for you to carry on the rest of your life without worrying without crying see the way how the buddha has advised he did not talk to tell you how to go to heaven how to go to nirvana at once first you have to prepare your worldly life your household life after preparing all these things when you are happy when you are contented when you are satisfied uh, then devote more time for concentration for meditation for uh, religious activities but meanwhile you can contribute something for religious activity at least certain percentage for religious activity that is another investment for your next life whatever you invest for your business for your worldly thing for your pleasure only for this life therefore it is your duty to invest something for your next life also otherwise you have to go with empty hand because you have not prepared for your future all of us know this is not the first and the last life we are spending here we have to continue whether we believe or not whether we can understand or not the life continue we cannot stop it then if life continue 
we had to act wisely, not to suffer. When the next life started, not to suffer there. While we are living here, we are molding our next life. By doing bad things, also we mold a life to suffer in the next existence. While doing good deeds, some services, some meritorious deeds, we prepare a life not to suffer, but to lead a peaceful, happy, contented life. Uh, that is how people continue this worldly life. Now when you see the world, today there are five billion human beings on this earth. Five billion. Among those five billion, how many people are starving, dying without food? How many people are suffering without a piece of cloth to wear? How many millions of human beings are spending their whole life for generations at the pavement, roadside, under the trees, during the summer, winter, rainy season, there are birth and death take place at the pavement, roadside, like cats and dogs, but they are human beings. And how many millions of human beings are running here and there as refugees because of war, volcanic eruption, earthquake, epidemic, diseases, flood, fire, they have become refugees, nowhere to go. Running here and there by carrying their children, their small, valuable property. Why these human beings suffer like this? While so many others are enjoying their life. And this clearly shows those who were born in certain countries, certain areas, where they cannot lead peaceful, happy life, due to lack of good karma. Please remember this. Patirupa desa vasocha pubbecha katapunyata. In Mangala Sutra, the Buddha explained this. Very simple language. He says, those who had the opportunity to be born in certain countries where they can lead peaceful life without facing such disasters, natural uh, destruction, war. The Buddha says they are fortunate, they are blessed human beings. Now you can compare your way of life with others who are suffering in millions in so many other countries. Then you can understand how fortunate you are. Do you think a single human being die here in this country without food? Do you think a single human being exists here in this country who cannot find out a piece of cloth to cover the nakedness? No. But in certain other countries, millions, nothing to eat and nothing to wear, like animals. Then who is responsible for their life? If God is responsible, it is the duty of the God to provide all the necessary things. Therefore, as Buddhists, we don't believe that God is responsible for it. We are responsible individually. If I don't like to suffer, my duty is not to harm others. 
Now this is another simple saying of the Buddha. Attanam te piyam janya rakhiyanam surakhita. If you really love your life, you should not harm others. Do you know the meaning of this saying? So the, if you harm others, you allow your life to suffer because of the harm, disturbances that you have created. Bad effects, bad karma, reflect. Then you have to suffer. That means you don't love your life. You allow your life to suffer. So if you don't like to suffer, what do you have to do? Not to do harm to others. And then you never suffer. Then, Punyani Paralokasmin Patitha Hontiparina. These simple sayings of the Buddha are very important for us to remember. During our lifetime, as I mentioned just now, we work, we earn, we enjoy, we deposit. But all these things, as long as we live, after our death, there is nothing for us to carry. We drop everything here. Therefore, we also must work wisely by knowing that we have to continue this journey. After our death, again we start new life. You know very well, the setting sun in the evening here becomes the rising sun in another country. The same sun disappears from this country, reappears from another country. So our life is exactly like this. We disappear here from this world, but reappear in somewhere else according to our own karma. And remember that. Nobody is responsible for our life. After our death, there is nobody to take the responsibility of our life. While we are living here, we had to prepare since we are going to start a new life, sometimes better than this one. And then you can carry on until you get fed up. And then make up your mind, you know. The Buddha, after gaining his enlightenment, he said like this, it is due to my ignorance and craving. I suffered for a long period, life after life, life after life, I suffered because of my craving and ignorance. Now I have stopped already. I don't allow this life to suffer anymore. Stop. Not no more rebirth for me. I don't like this rebirth anymore. My mind is free from all the mental disturbances and worries and craving and attachment and selfishness and jealousy and anger and grudge and all the evil forces washed away from my mind. Mind is pure. Uh, that is the final goal. That is the aim of our life. We had to carry this life up to that final goal to end, to stop all our physical and mental problems and disturbances. So religion is important for us to reach, to attain that final goal. That is the purpose of our life. The purpose of our life is not to suffer. Birth and death and birth and death and sickness, these are not the purpose of our life. The purpose is to stop all these things. 
So the Buddha has given this advice by showing the clear picture of our life, of this world where we exist. And you are coming here to learn something, to understand something, to find out whether there is any method, any system for you to practice, to avoid, to stop, to get rid of your problems, your worries, your sicknesses and so many things. But we cannot stop everything as long as we exist by leading a worldly life. We have to go on reducing, 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 reducing life after life. Reducing selfishness, reducing anger, reducing jealousy, reducing enmity. All the evil forces we had to reduce, reduce, but at once we cannot get rid of them. And then one day life will become very perfect very holy, very sacred, very noble. Now we are not noble, because there are a lot of problems and worries and disturbances, anger, jealousy, grudge and ill will and all sort of things. Therefore we are not noble. But we are trying to be noble. So if we want to be noble, then we have to reduce it. So these things we cannot gain simply by praying or worshipping. They are important. Worshipping, praying, chanting are important to calm our mind, to train our mind, stop evil thoughts to disturb the mind. The time that you spend by praying and worshipping and chanting you maintain some sort of pure mind at that time. It is very important. But as soon as you stop all these things, all the rubbish again come and occupy the mind. During the time that you spend for your meditation, also like that. Now, you take one big bucket or basin and cover the green grass. Keep for two weeks. After two weeks, you go and open, you can see the green grass turn into white color. The time that you spend for your meditation is exactly like change the color in your mind. Reduce the dirt from your mind. When you cover this one, you stop sunlight then the green color disappears, turn into white color. But after one week, you come and see the white color grass again turn into green color. So after meditation, after purifying some sort of uh, evil thought from the mind, eradicating them, you maintain pure mind. When you stop your meditation, again all the rubbish come and occupy the mind, just like the grass. So, as long as we maintain our greed, our anger, our ignorance, these are the three main roots. One of these three always creates problems in our mind. Either our greed or our anger, or our ignorance. So as long as we keep these three things in the mind, there is no complete purity. For the time being we can control the mind by suppressing them. But when you stop, again these things come and occupy the mind. Uh, this is the problem we are facing. So, these ad four advices given by the Buddha Uttana Sampada, Araka Sampada, 
कल्याण मित्रता समजीविकता डू समथिंग विदाउट वेस्टिंग योर वैल्यूबल ह्यूमन लाइफ दैट मीन डोंट बी लेसी दैट द फर्स्ट एडवाइस आरक्त संपदा what you have earned by working you must know how to protect them without wasting without neglecting since you are live, living in the society you have to associate with others you have to work with others you need some friends so when you associate with them you must know who are the reliable trustworthy good friends then that gives some sort of confidence for you to maintain your life samajivikata you have to organize your income and expenditure in such a way for you to maintain your way of life to avoid frustration disappointment unsatisfactoriness in your life without the spending everything what you have earned always there must be something for you to invest uh, this gives you happiness confidence in your life uh, these are the four advice given by the world on the other hand i also mentioned whatever we have earned whatever we have accumulated however we enjoy our life after our death we drop everything here there is nothing for us to carry but all the good deed the good karma that we have done support us in the next life provide all the necessary things for us to lead contented life happy life without suffering like those who are suffering due to lack of their good karma ah uh, these are the few advices i'd like to mention as the dhamma taught by the buddha for us to lead a worldly life if you are not ready to renounce the worldly life if you want to carry on your family life married life business life uh, then these advices are important in time to come there will be a day for you to make up your mind or oh, this kind of worldly life is very troublesome better to keep away to have a peace of mind so that you can experience more contentment more happiness more satisfaction then jealousy anger enmity ill will fear suspicion insecurity feeling never appear in your mind life will be free from all these disturbances after that renunciation but while leading a worldly life almost every day you had to face this problem these are the ingredients in a worldly life renunciation means keeping away from all these disturbances to lead peaceful happy contented life to find out the the final goal easily while leading worldly life not so easy to find out the final goal because there are so many commitments and responsibilities but after renunciation easy to find out the final goal because there are few disturbances in the mind all the others you have renounced Uh, this is the advantage of renunciation renunciation does not mean running away from the house or shaving the head or using the yellow robe 
that is not the renunciation. Renunciation means detachment. Reduce attachment that we have developed towards so many worldly things. Crazy for pleasure, crazy for enjoyment, crazy for property, crazy for names and fame and publicity and so many things. Separate the mind from these attachments. Uh, that is called renunciation. Then the mind gets the chance to enjoy bliss, happiness, peace. Now no peace, no bliss, no happiness. We gain little bit of sensual pleasure. This sensual pleasure is just like lightning. Just appear and disappear. Uh, this is the nature of worldly pleasure. Always appear and disappear. But happiness Bliss never appear from the mind because the mind we have prepared the ground in that mind to maintain the happiness and bliss and contentment, satisfaction for a long period. Thank you very much.